Hey, this is going to be just kind of a quick video to go over what I think is very exciting. Um, so finally, NVIDIA is putting to rest GeForce Experience, which, uh, yeah, good. It, it's it's not a good app. It really has always had a lot of issues, it's never been ideal, and they really didn't do much to improve it for a long time. But we're just switching to an entirely different platform now. So we're just getting rid of that. Um, and the great thing is that this is going to actually replace kind of like everything for NVIDIA. It's going to be more of a centralized thing. Um, so you can go ahead and get the beta um, either from just going to their news or I will have the link visible. Um, I'll have the link in the description and maybe have it pop up. So here we can see um, pretty similar at first glance, but definitely more fluid UI. Um, actually don't even have to log in to start which is great because it just like always logs me out for some strange reason um, and you can see that they have incorporated more of the creator tools straight in here um, which I feel like a lot of people don't realize how much stuff they have access to with NVIDIA um, so so obviously if you have a good PC I don't know why you need GeForce now um, but you know, it's there. Um, now, NVIDIA broadcast, I have um, messed around with it a little bit. I need to actually try it again. So I do want to go over the rest of these tools. Um, I did a little comparison with my voice on AMD noise suppression, which I'm using right now um, with my CPU and this uh, NVIDIA broadcast. Um, and I did cover the other useful features in that, as well as I looked at NVIDIA Canvas and this one, um, the uh, image comparison tool. And there is a lot of stuff that I want to cover in Omniverse. I'll probably just cover a brief overview though. Um, so I'll just throw that together and have that up soon um, for people who are interested. But I will just try to wrap up the rest of this video now because I mostly just want to let people know that this is actually out because a lot of people probably missed it. Um, but yeah, so it's really cool. Obviously, we get. Our drivers um, and if you're ever wondering what the difference between studio and game ready is studio is just like it won't be uh, the most recent updates it's gonna be more about stability other than that they're like pretty much the same but you can probably just go for game ready most of the time um, so in this graphics tab we always have had some uh, like per game options but we now have like all of the useful settings from the NVIDIA control panel, um, at least in terms of the graphics settings. So we no longer have to go into that stupid laggy menu that would constantly reset. Um, like it's missing a few things, but pretty much uh, everything that I would use normally is already in here. Um, like these are the things that I always like default to changing. Um, Yeah, so then there's this redeem tab, which, uh, I mean, that's a little, it's a little sussy, but yeah, I mean, I think it's fine. Uh, it's cool that they will hopefully have some partners that like they just can give away some stuff. Hopefully, like just no, no stakes attached, um, no over the top advertising, please. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, yeah, like it's fine. Whatever, not a big deal. Um, and then you can actually now directly launch into the NVIDIA control panel. So again, this is just really nice that this just combines like pretty much everything. Um, as for the overlay, uh, that is also going to be a little bit different. So it's just like nicer organization. Um, it has felt a lot less laggy compared to like the old one that would just freeze up so many games. But all the same settings are here for the most part. Uh, there is the new RTX Dynamic Vibrance, which I have not actually tried yet. I, I feel like it'll be worse if it's a game that has reshade, but you know, uh, anything else that doesn't have reshade would be nice to have. So the stats view, I really like that we can actually like change the uh, location now. Um, like there's actual sliders now <laughs> instead of just 
do you want it in a corner or like which corner do you want it in like that's all we had before uh, this is nice it's definitely like just a little bit more uh quality of life stuff i guess but nothing huge and groundbreaking but i definitely i'm happier with this um, i think that most people will be happy with this not having to log in is honestly probably the biggest w of all this <laughs> but yeah i mean it's, it's pretty cool um and yeah so there's not really i don't think there's anything else that i particularly want to touch on with uh, this besides those programs which uh, i will go into oh actually what am i <laughs> what am i doing uh the number one feature i have not touched on yet actually so that is that we now have 120 fps for shadow play which we've always had like 120 even 240 in nvenc but having it actually available in shadow play is just so nice because now if you want um to stream at 60 fps which you should probably do because it's going to be like too much of a downgrade in uh bit rate per frame otherwise um you basically just like you had to use 60 fps or you had to have two obs instances open and like slow down your computer a little bit more now you can just get a clean 120 fps shot from the game um and like if you do any kind of editing it's it's going to be like much much better um i still like i still want them to give us actual like controls <laughs> like i don't understand why i don't just have the full like everything that i get in obs because like it's the same thing doesn't really make sense why is it turning off what i gotta figure that out i think that's that's something on my end but yeah that's pretty much it for that um yeah so again you can just get this from their website or in the description i'm also going to go ahead and link to the one thing that is still useful so if you want to access some of the other settings um, from the control panel well obviously if you want to access like monitor settings you have to go there but for the game specific stuff 99 percent of the time everything that you need is going to be in here okay anything that's not in there you're going to want to just use this nvidia profile inspector to do um most of the stuff you shouldn't touch unless you know what you're doing um but there are a few cases where there are some helpful things so for instance um if you have latency when you are tabbing out of games like bad latency like it, it just, like builds up over time um that can be because of this um force p2 state is basically like a lower power state um that your gpu might switch to when you are tab out of a game um you can also control the shader cache and um, rebar both globally and you can control it on a per game basis which you can't do otherwise so like if there's a game that you really don't want it to have caching stuff um, then this is very helpful um, actually yeah like if you if you mod Genshin um, you probably want your cache turned off like modding some games will work by actually like replacing the shaders so then caching the shaders is not very helpful <laughs> um, so it's nice to be able to disable it on specific games without doing it to everything yeah everything else in here is pretty much just like very very highly specific features that you should not touch because you will probably break stuff um, but yeah those those are helpful and if you already know what you're doing then yeah be my guest go ahead and do whatever you want <laughs> So I talked about what you can do in NVIDIA Profile Inspector. For the control panel, there's really not much that's left that's useful, pretty much unless you're going to do scaling. Or if you want to use um, the RTX super resolution settings for videos. Other than that, like there's not really anything you need to do in here. So that's nice. And yeah, that's pretty much what I have for now. Um, 
I can't make promises about like videos. I don't want to, you know, promise some deadline and then not be releasing stuff. But I am gonna be trying to release a lot more videos soon. Um, I might do like kind of a general Windows 11 guide. Um, this is my recommendation now is not even to really like bother with tweaking Windows too much in terms of like performance, but just get on stock Windows 11. So I might just do like a video on how to like improve Windows in terms of just like uh, interface and like controls and stuff. Um, is it actually like the performance is great? <laughs> like you don't really need to do much. Um, the one thing, the only really important thing with Windows 11, and the reason why it is worth it over Windows 10, in 100% of cases, is this setting right here. You always want this on. This completely negates the issue with VSync with multiple monitors and high refresh rates, um, as well as like just weirdly optimized, uh, like not true full screen games, which was more of an issue with DirectX 11. Now with DirectX 12, it's every game is like that, but it's a bit more optimized. So yeah, I um, definitely you want this on like 100 percent of the time. This you might have heard, don't use it it's good now in Windows 11 like I don't think there's any real downside if it does cause a stutter turn it off but like there's not really any reason to so yeah I mean I don't think that I need to make a full video again but just um, kind of a general Windows 11 guide might be good because most people probably don't even know how to like fix your interface alright well I'll see you in the next one